Part of this project is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. Hey guys, this is Sam from the Controposter shop. And today's video, it will be all about our new uh, controller board, the Apollo V4. Uh, for those who don't know, the Apollo uh, project is basically a uh, fully open source uh, controller board for resin printer in mind. And since we have a new machine, new requirements, uh, to check all the boxes, uh, we needed to make a new revision of this board to suit uh, all our needs. Melissa will be, the, will be there today with you uh, to show you uh, all about uh, the, new, the new version. Uh, she, she's the one that knew pretty much everything about the last version because she was the one that assembled uh, all the boards, the previous board uh, that was shipped all around the world uh, to users. Before jumping in, uh, I just wanted to say a little something. Uh, because we have been busy, uh, very busy uh, the, the last year because uh, of our new house. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time for our project. So um, I just wanted to thank PCBWay uh, for helping us in this project and by sending us uh, parts for, for the project and also uh, complete assembled board uh, for, for it. Speaking of PCBWay, for those who don't know, they are a leading company in PCB manufacturing. They can offer you top quality PCB with almost as much layer as you want in combination with PCB assembly. Remember the time as a maker when one of the only way to have a somewhat good looking circuit board was to play with strong acid and copper plated FR4? As affordable as they are, it's not worth it to do it myself anymore. They are not just offering PCB but also all sort of things like additive manufacturing, even metal or engineering materials, and also subtractive manufacturing like CNC machining. You just need to upload your file and choose what you want, and that's pretty much it. You can learn all that and more by using the link in the video description. Thank you PCBWay. Hey guys, it's been a long time since you've heard from me. I'm Melissa and today I present you the new Apollo V4 and its features. For those who don't know, the Apollo board has been created for resin 3D printers in mind and it is 100% open source. It's not much different from your typical 3D printer controller board but with our own twist on it. There isn't much more to it than its predecessor, the Apollo V3.5, just a couple updates and add-ons. First of all, we kept the same footprint and similar layout to it. Unfortunately, there is no artwork on the PCB yet because it's a prototype and Sam wants to give you something nice for the release version. For a quick rundown of the layout, we have the power supply area here, the MCU part in the middle, and all the inputs and outputs all around the board. Let's start with the PSU part of the PCB. We are still using the same step-down IC because they have proven to be reliable in the past by giving us good performance and they don't need a lot of passive components so it can keep the BOM low. One is giving us our 5 volt rail and the other the 12 volt one. They are both capable of outputting up to 5 amps continuously. At the output of each one we have an e-fuse just in case to protect the ICs. We know that it's sometimes difficult to know or monitor how much current we are using, so this is why we have included their own separate shunt and amp meter. They will send the data to the MCU so we can know in real time how much power we are using and notify us if we are approaching the overload because you wanted too many RGB LEDs in your machine. For the inputs, there is nothing too special about them. We have down here two thermistor inputs for your typical 10K NTC thermistor. This will offer you things like resin temperature and chamber temperature. For the limit switches or sensor inputs, it's your typical VCC ground and signal pinout, but with a twist. It happened in the past that we ordered the wrong kind of sensor or what we had on hand was not suitable for the original configuration. 
So we kept solder bridges at the back to let you choose if you want to pull up or down the MCU pin. So you can choose something like a NPN or PNP sensor. Now let's go see the outputs. Up here, we have a power MOSFET to drive whatever you want with it. Even if we don't use it anymore because our LED driver uses PWM inputs. We kept it because it could be very useful in the future for things like a powerful heater chamber. Just beside it, we have a PWM output for the LED driver I just talked about. At the bottom, we have an addressable LED output so you can hook up your LED there. The 5 volt comes from the onboard 5 volt supply, but if you have too many of them, you can use a separate power supply and keep the digital pin. Over here, we have an onboard stepper driver. We loved having your mover stepper driver, but we decided to go onboard for a more unified look and better thermal management. We also upgraded it for the TMC2226. Here, we have the fans and optional output. A bit like the sensor inputs, those are fully configurable, so you can choose the voltage output for them at the back using the solder bridges. We have two channels here for three pin fans with each channel driving two fans. In other words, we have one MOSFET for two fans. Also, there are separate PWM pins for all four fans. For the optional outputs, we have the same two channels, fully configurable with four outputs. For the IOs, we kept the same idea with the last gen by having the AC port containing all necessary power pins and four general IOs and two ADC pins. We also have an onboard USB. This is just a relocated part coming from the Pi. It's nice to have if ever you need to wire an internal USB device, like a webcam, if you have the USB ports of the Pi facing the outside of the machine. Finally, down here, we have a CAN port for possible future upgrades. We don't have a solid plan for it, but we thought it would be nice to have if we want to expand the capabilities of the board. It's also not populated right now, thanks to Sam thinking he had the right footprint for this job. The heart of the machine has also been upgraded for the new RP2350B, the big brother of the RP2040. Because we have a couple of more things going on and we wanted more from the Apollo, we went with the faster chip with more IOs so we have plenty to work with. To control all this, we switched for the Raspberry Pi 5 that will interface with those pogo pins like we did in the past. The only difference now with the Pi 5 is that the pins are now flush under the board so no need to cut and file them anymore. Finally, there is one last thing left to discuss on this board that you might like or not. It's this little IC here. It's more precisely a crypto authentication chip and this will be only available on the original boards from us or authorized third parties. We have been approached a few times in the past for the Prometheus and Apollo project. We want to stay fully open source and sometimes it closes doors for potential partners. The dilemma was, how can we stay truly and fully open source by keeping certain protections for us, clients and partners? The big idea here is to give the original Apollo board an original serial number or key that will offer more things. People recreating the Apollo for themselves without this will still have full access to everything, don't worry, but this will give the opportunity to identify genuine boards for us or companies. Companies that want to protect their own secret sauce like proprietary functions will be able to keep it for themselves. We will give you more details on that when it's time. We still are true believers of open source and we know anyway that the best thing comes from the community. This was it for today guys. Uh, I hope you like uh, this video and the reveal uh, of the new Apollo. Um, in the next video, uh, I think I will show you uh, the new build arm 
for the, the printer, the build arm and uh, the, the build plate. So this will be uh, all about the assembly and the new version. I'm excited to show you because like everything else, uh, we have new features and I think, I think it will be very cool. And since then, you can, you can join uh, our Discord to discuss uh, and talk about uh, this project and anything, and <laughs> anything else too. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope seeing you in the next video. See you soon. I will do your transition. <laughs>